Hello dear ethical hackers, today I will give you my honest review of the Certified Red Team Operator Certification, CRTO for short. Before that, let me give you a brief context. In the middle of this year, I tackled the Rasta Labs Pro Lab on Hack the Box. My biggest complaint, if you watched the video, was that many students shared the same lab, which opened unintended attack paths. Prior students weakened the boxes through their progress, which made it dramatically easier for later students. So, as a feedback, I reached out to Daniel Duggan, known as Rasta Mouse on Twitter. However, I came to see that he no longer supports the lab. Shortly after that, Daniel reached out to offer me his second version of the Certified Red Team Operator Certification, which contains a dedicated lab. I was humbled and honored at the same time, to be honest. I certainly didn't plan to pass that certification, but when the opportunity comes, one should seize it. After a few months, I finally found the time to go through the course and tackle the exam, and here is my honest review for you. First of all, what is this certification? Well, it's an entry level to intermediate security certification for penetration testers who want to advance their career and become red teamers. The candidate will explore the tactics, techniques and procedures that threat actors use to infiltrate IT systems and stay under the detection radar. It also mentions some operational security considerations and allows practicing and bypassing detections. Throughout the hands-on experience, the students will apply their knowledge to a live lab. I didn't pay for the certification. I only gave my email to Rasta Mouse. The order process can be accomplished via the zeropointsecurity.co.uk website. The course costs £349, including lifetime access to the course material and its updates, one exam attempt and one hour of lab time. Shortly after Rasta Mouse registered my accounts, I received two emails. The first was an invitation link to the online course. The second email came from snaplabs.io, the platform that hosts the practice and the exam labs. Once I set up my account on both platforms, I was ready to start learning. The course content is one of the key strengths of this certification. I think it covers plenty of concepts related to red teaming. It is divided into several modules and each one corresponds to a tactic used by threat actors. For instance, the lateral movement module explains in great detail the techniques used to move from one computer to another. There's also a search feature that allows you to quickly find the relevant parts of the course, which is particularly useful during your revision for the exam. Because you have lifetime access to the course material, it is a treasure trove for students during their red team journey. Some modules come with videos demonstrating the concept in the practice lab. And a peer-to-peer -peer listener allows... It took me about two weeks between my day-to-day -day job and family to go through the course. I wish I could track my progress within the course dashboard. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case. Instead, I had to revise my notes to know where I left. All right, let's talk about the different lab components. It's a Active Directory infrastructure composed of three forests. The first forest has a child domain and a root domain, while the remaining forests are configured with inbound and outbound domain trust, respectively. Cobalt Strike is now the command and control server of choice in the course. The lab was designed to allow students to explore the different vulnerabilities explained in the course material. The goal is to apply what you learned in the course material to gain domain admin on all forests. To connect to the lab, you need to use your account on Snap Labs. Once logged in, you can start your dedicated lab and connect on a Kali machine from your web browser through Guacamole. Even though you see a green status, you'd have to wait a bit more. This was frustrating at first, but I got used to it. In fact, I realized that the lab was running fine, it just needed a few minutes to be reachable through Guacamole. You get access to two attacking machines, among several others. The first is a Kali box, and the second is a Windows machine. 
I personally used the Windows machine for all my Red Team operations. I used Buddy to SSH into Kali and spin up the Cobalt Strike team server. Then I connected to it using Cobalt Strike client. Additionally, I used the Windows box to compile the tools I needed. During my experimentation with the lab, I found some limitations. At the time of this video, there is no VPN connection possible. The Guacamole interface takes some time to get used to. In fact, the most annoying experience was the copy-paste. Every time I wanted to copy some text from my host machine to the lab, I had to type Control alt shift paste my text, hit the shortcut again, and paste my payload on the lab machine. Since you have a limited number of hours, Snap Labs allows you to pause and resume the lab at will. This is good, but unfortunately, you would have to relaunch the team server whenever you restart your lab. I recommend you define an alias to quickly spin up the team server. I also recommend you persist your access on the compromised machines. Otherwise, you would lose your progress in the lab. You can't upload your own tools on the lab. However, the tools available in the student's box were enough for me. Although I have a stable fiber internet connection, I experienced several connection losses. They typically lasted a few seconds. All right, let's now talk about the exam. Once I went through the course material and compromised all the forests, I booked my exam for the next weekend. I didn't struggle to find a suitable time slot, which is good. I added the event to my calendar and received a notification about an hour before the exam due date. Meanwhile, I downloaded the threat profile from Snap Labs dashboard, which is a document that explains the different techniques that I needed to emulate during the exam. Therefore, I prepared a customized C2 profile using Cobalt Strike's malleable C2 feature. The exam is a new lab added to your Snap Labs dashboard. I had 48 hours to capture 6 out of 8 flags from the different machines at minimum. Each flag can be sent for verification on Snap Labs dashboard instantly. You don't have to send any report at the end of the exam, so you know when you passed your exam. I liked that I could pause the lab whenever I wanted in a 4 day window. This meant that I could take longer rests without consuming the exam hours. The lab stops when you exhaust your lab time or four days, whichever comes first. I personally didn't use this feature myself, but I certainly see its benefits. From my own experience, I think that the exam was the most fun. Compared to my previous certifications, this lab was the biggest hence more vulnerabilities to exploit. I don't want to spoil it for you, but it somewhat resembled the practice lab. So if you practiced well, then you should pass the exam. Like the practice lab, I experienced some connection problems from time to time. They didn't last more than uh, a minute, but the experience was quite frustrating. I was able to compromise the entire exam. Unfortunately, I only got six out of eight flags. The remaining two were not properly deployed. This would have been a serious problem if I hadn't compromised the whole lab, which makes me think of the support. Well, there is a Discord server for Zero Point Security where students can hang out and discuss several topics related to the course and other subjects. It is also a place where you can ask support questions. I didn't need that much support. The course concepts were explained very well and the videos that supported them were clear. However, I did need technical assistance during the exam. From what I can tell, Rastamouse is the only one who can help you with technical issues. The other members are either moderators or students like me. Daniel does what he can, probably even more. He replies during the weekends as well. However, I don't think it's enough. There should be a dedicated support team for the very use cases I encountered during the exam. In fact, I only found the lost flags on Monday, more than 24 hours since I started my exam. All right, so at the end, should you take CRTO and how to pass your exam? By now, you should have a clear overview of the certification. If you're still not sure whether to take it or not, let me give you these ideas. If you are totally new to penetration testing, especially Active Directory hacking, I suggest you take other certifications first, like CRTP. I already did a video on it. However, if you're familiar with Active Directory hacking, you might give it a try. The course is rich and heavy, so if you rush it, you will certainly miss many interesting concepts. I suggest you focus on each module at a time, apply your knowledge in the practice lab, 
and take relevant notes to help you quickly reproduce the attack. You will thank me during the exam. So at the end, what is the verdict? This certification certainly contained several benefits. First of all, I appreciated the lifetime access to the course content. The course itself is exhaustive and rich. Both the practice lab and the exam lab allowed me to extensively apply my knowledge. You get a badge from badger.com as proof that you successfully passed the exam. So I think that's a good certification. However, there are still some improvements that can be applied. For instance, a support team is mandatory. Secondly, I think it would be great to reach the labs through the VPN using RDP with the possibility to copy the students' own tools on the lab. And finally, I recommend implementing a progress feature to help students track their progress in the course. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what was your experience with this certification for the ones who have passed it. And if you still have any questions for those who didn't attempt it yet, feel free to leave a comment below and I do my best to answer them.